This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. of course, is what is commonly known as the Ramble, and the Ramble commonly goes until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. We're still on Daylight Time, aren't we, dear? Huh? Aren't we? What? Oh, you put the sound on. Yeah, I put the sound yeah. on. Yeah, we are on, yeah, we. it's later now, it's the end of October. See, I thought I adjusted your color so that you would look Fall better. Fall back. Spring wait ahead. Minute, wait a minute. My color looks better than your color. My color looks better than yeah, your, your color. color. You, you, I, don't, I don't know what happens. I keep trying to adjust it. and I, right. I never, Don't adjust it. I never get it right. Anyway, uh, we can do these. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Friday. I hate it when you sing that song. I know, and I do it on purpose. Maybe you're just more pale than I am. Maybe I'm just more colorfully dressed. I took my makeup off. Huh? I have no makeup on. You have no makeup on? No. Oh. Maybe I can turn your color up a little bit. Maybe we can Maybe do I that. need a tan. Maybe I need to go someplace like vacation. You need more vacation y time thing? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah? Yeah? Oh uh-huh. look, 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 look. What? All the little circles. Oh yeah, people are, are I like that. That's so cute. Yeah, isn't that cute? Isn't yeah. that lovely? That's yeah. So cute. They do that. Oh there we go. Well I think I've got your, your color a little bit better now. Okay. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There's one other thing I didn't do. Let's see here. What is it? White balance. Let me change the white balance Lay here. In there there we go. Me? There. That's better. Can you see me? That's better. And then we turn down the saturation a little bit. And you should be okay. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we oh, that's go. terrific. All right. Yeah, now you're looking uh, You're looking good. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I get rid of... Uh, that okay all right there you go now she looks a little bit more like uh, uh, more colorful hi i'm sorry that we had trouble getting on tonight but we had trouble getting on tonight yeah n- another little problem with technical well what happened was just before i went on the air uh i uh, the computer uh, died th- i couldn't like i used two different screens to uh, one to send the picture out and then i go to this one for doing the show and it wouldn't go back to the other one and then when it finally did, it started moving things all over the place on its own. So I had to reboot Rebooted. the whole system. And then I had to reset the whole thing up. So that's so why we were on So what happens? It's just light. dead air out there when that yeah, happens? Yeah, dead air. Did and that then, ever happen and, to you when, you're, when you were on the radio? What? <laughs> Where it just went... Every show I did was dead air. <laughs> Kidding me? No, did it ever happen where something went wrong like that? Oh, I mean, we, we had... Um, we, you know, you would have things go wrong, something wrong in the studio, or um, I don't think the satellite ever went out. I, I don't think the uplink ever. Do you went remember bad. when Dan Rather walked off the station and it was dead air? He was giving the news. Yeah, he was mad about something. He was mad about the U.S. Open because it went over oh, into well, the Le- news. No, I, yes, it was. Yes, but Leno did worse. What did Leno? He didn't do? even go on. He, he was supposed to go on live after a game, and the game kept going on and on and on. So and he finally, just walked away. Uh, well, actually, Helen Kushnick, who was his manager, was the one who called the shot and said, no show tonight, and, and that got her fired. Wow. You, you know. <laughs> Didn't get him fired, it got well, he her was, fired. He was supposed to wait until the football game was over with and then come do a live Tonight Show. Wow. And uh, it was just getting to be too late. And she's calling the network saying, get these guys off. She's talking about football. <laughs> get these guys off. And uh, they said, are you out of your fucking mind, Helen? And she she was losing her mind. Was that the one that was played by Kathy Bates? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in that, it's in that, the, that, the Late Shift movie. Yeah, yeah. That's a great book, by the way. All about... You know, Letterman leaving CBS, NBC and going to CBS and Leno getting the show Child, and, yeah. and the whole thing and, and how they forced Johnny out, how Helen forced Johnny out. 
imagine forcing Johnny Carson out. Wow. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know. But anyway, so uh, uh, I had these problems tonight. and uh, Yes, you did. Uh, but uh, we're, we're on now. We're and, here. And we're starting to get some people watching. And it's Friday. Friday. Is Christine watching? Is she? Christine? My friend. My head, I hadn't seen her in a while, and we had lunch today. Well, I'm glad to tell your friends to watch this show because there's nobody else watching. <laughs> so, Hi. You know, uh, you know. Uh, tell your friends, you know, I mean, I, I, for the first day this week, I didn't put this thing on Facebook Live on, on, on my Facebook page, and everybody complained. So I finally relented because I was just pissy about Facebook. So you're on Facebook okay. now, too. Well, right I'm not, now. We, but we're not on Facebook forward slash GabNet. Live is where we. Oh, ran it. But are you on your regular Facebook page? I'm on the page? regular Facebook page. Good, because that's where I go. Yeah, and then the first night we had, like, more people than we've ever had watch it. Like, they missed it, you know. And then the next last night, almost nobody. It goes back to uh, yeah. normal. <laughs> you know, I, I guess they also know they can go over to the GabNet dot net page and they can watch the video from the night before not yeah. only in the on demand but also up in the right hand yeah. corner i watch it in the next morning because i'm always asleep when you run your program so you, i watch morning joe first or i listen to it while i'm working and then you go on at 10 well if you ever, at have, nine, if you ever you, have trouble going to sleep i would strongly suggest watching this program or just because listening that'll to put it. you to sleep that'll just listening to it will <laughs> listen, put me to just sleep. right to sleep right to sleep I had you know. such a nice day today. We we met for lunch, and it's been a while since I've seen her, and we got all caught Ooh. up. Christine. Who's Lester's, Christine? My friend from Trace. Actually, I knew her way back before when I was you married. You explain what Trace was. Trace right? was a magazine that I worked at. But before that, when I was married to David, number two, husband number two. That's not the one with the tattoo on your leg, is no, it? No, that was just boyfriend. You got a tattoo on your leg for a boyfriend? Yes. Do you remember him? Yes, he's dead, thank God. <laughs> what do you mean he's dead, thank God? Oh, it was a disaster. And yet you've got Buddy written on your ankle. <laughs> well, that's another story all by itself. Why haven't you gone on and get a tattoo that says Alex? Well, I could put a cross through it and put a red cross and write Alex. If you'd like that, I'll do that for Actually, you. Actually, there are places you can go where people could fix that up. I don't want to. I like it. Put, I want to get it Brighton. No, but put my name in there. We could do that if, yeah. you, if that's what you would like. I'm looking to see if my blood test came through. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, no, they'd send me an email. Oh, here we go. The health report. Here we go. Well, I, I figured out why my PSA went up. I know. Because in one year, it went up about a point, point, uh, 1.1. 1. 1. Well, you lost all that weight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And then I was reading, and it said that if you're obese, you will have a lower PSA rating than if you're not. So I lost 60 pounds from the time they took the one blood yeah. test to the time they took the next blood test, and that's probably why it went up. Sure, it makes sense. You know, so who knows? Who, who knows? knows? What's gonna it could go down, it could who go knows? up, you know. Who knows? But uh, I, I'm being pretty good about it. What do you mean you're being pretty good about it? You don't talk about it every three minutes, you just talk about it every four minutes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's improvement. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's more the worst thing for him, everybody, is that he's a you know hypochondriac, which we all know. The worst thing. The for worst me. thing for him is a computer. Why? Why you look up every ailment and every lump and bump? It's cancer. It's this. It's that. Well, see, at my age. Well, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Which is quite sufficient. It's up there. You know, I'm lucky. You're in the last chapter. I'm lucky. I've lived longer than most people That's true. Do. That's true. Okay, I'm past the average age. What All is right? the average age? The average age for a guy is 75, I think. So you've like definitely passed it. You've yeah. long passed I'm, I'm it. I'm living in what is called borrowed time. You are on borrowed time. Okay, so at this point in my life, being the world's greatest hypochondriac. Which he is. And in that I've spent my entire life worrying about death. Which he does. Yeah. I'm sit I just sit here all day long wondering what is it that's going to get me. Well, let me just tell and you so something. And so I'm just wondering, like, I have an itch on my side. Could that be the beginning of it will turn into a big boil and then will it turn into uh, some kind of thing Cancer? that will kill me? Yeah. Yeah. Because something's going to get well, me. Well, let me tell you something. Something. We are all going to die someday. 
That's a fact. You can't get around Not that me. one. Well, I've decided. I want to be a slobbering uh, I- uh, idiot in a wheelchair sitting outside the nursing home. Absolutely. In your in your in absolutely. your in your medicine I gown. I want to be. I want to be a uh, a problem for everybody. Well, I let me tell be, you. I want, let me tell you, it's not going to be my problem because I have a set date. I ain't going to be around to oh, change oh, your diapers. Oh, 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 really? I'm not going to be around to no, change. No, no, you, you think you have a set date because Larry Bubbles Brown sent you to a, a site. It was great. Where it tells you, we put in a bunch of information. Put a bunch of information. It tells you when you're going to die. Yeah. And I'm January 2023, and I'm looking at the way this world is going. You know something? It's not a bad time. You to wish just... it were faster. Than I that. do. I do. I do. I do. So I'm not going to be around to change your diapers or your feeding tube or take the well, slobber I'll be, off. I'll be of your 83 mouth. by that time. You'll, I should be drooling. You'll be in, you'll be in a nurse. You'll be in a state-run well, nursing if I home. Don't, turns out I don't have prostate cancer. <laughs> I'm going to go find out why my feet are numb, and then I'm going to go talk, take care of my my hernia. Right. I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to do enough medical procedures this year that even though I'll have to put out like a a thousand dollars because that's our minimum, I want to cost our insurance company money. Something. I a lot, you know. So I'm going to go get the hernia operation. But I'm going to get the golden hernia operation. Probably the doctor would tell me, "Yeah, it's just wait and see." I don't want gold, to wait and see. I want to. I want to get that fucking Oxford to pay something. What does he put his gold finger up your ass? No, 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 no. Is that the, the golden the, shower? No, the, the <laughs> finger up your ass is with the urologist. Urologist. Do you, my urologist doesn't put his finger up I my know, ass? I know, he does. I don't think he likes to put his finger up people's asses. He um, uses a... Um, a probe. He No, he uses a sauna. Yeah, a sonogram, sonogram. Which is great. He does the wands, mean, goes, oh, yeah, and you've got some cysts in your kidneys. No big deal. Don't worry about that. And then he goes down and he says, oh, your prostate looks about normal size and so on and if this turns out that my numbers went up and he wants to see you know do what he would normally do with his finger he's going to shove a probe up my ass <laughs> oh god with, no which is a lot better than the finger for some reason he just sticks a probe up there and does a sonogram of your prostate and can see whether you have any cancer or anything so he but he i don't think he, he he's never done the digital rectal examination with me and i'm going to ask him next time why he's he never does done it. it with a smile no, I'd, I'd like to ask him. One. Well, I had a urologist once in San Francisco. He was the head of St. Francis Hospital. I remember St. Francis. And their urology department. He was the head of their urology department. And uh, he had his office right across the street. And I uh, I used to go to him because I would have little pee-pee problems, you know. Now you have big ones. Right. And and uh, so I went to him. And uh, he would uh, he would do the the rectal the old rectal dig- exam. digital rectal Im- examination because they, they go in there to feel the prostate. Uh, but it, do you ever it, get off on it? They call it no, no. <laughs> Some people no, do, but you do come a little bit sometimes. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. They, he gives you a Kleenex <laughs> after you dribble. <laughs> but they shove the, he shoves his finger up your ass and. Uh, they can feel around, but they call it the gold standard, but it really isn't because you can't feel behind or wherever. Whereas with a sonogram, you you'd can. be able to see everything, which they didn't have in those days. Sure. So anyway, he the first time I went to him, he shoves his finger up my ass, and he goes, uh-huh. he says, and then he, after he, he pulls him out, and he goes, these damn short fingers of mine. <laughs> he said that? Yes. <laughs> And I said to him, "Why didn't you become a urologist? Why, why didn't you go into some other medicine? If your finger, I mean, don't you go to a urologist convention and and uh, uh, doctors or urologists are bragging about the length of their fingers? You know, like, oh, look at this! I can get up there and I can feel the back part of it. You know? <laughs> and you you just got these stubby little fingers and you can't get all the way up there. And he says, "Yeah, it's a problem." You know, and that was it. I liked him though; he was really great. Because uh, any doctor who answers all my questions, and he has many, no, is you know a lot of doctors just want to get you out in a short amount of time. Like I found with like our, we go to the same internist. I find like if I have a list of questions, uh-huh. he will answer every single one. Yeah, until I'm but finished asking questions, so as, I write them as, down as he looks at his watch. I keep a list and I, I add to it so I remember it. Well, I go to the same doctor, and I feel he wants me to get out of there as fast as possible. But if you have questions... I have questions. Well, then, you know, then, then ask Why them. is this night different than all other <laughs> nights? 
<laughs> Why on this night do we recline rather than sit up straight? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. That's the four cautious, ladies and gentlemen. No. Ten twenty-four. I'm just Wait, saying. No. I'm just saying. Why do you just bring a, that up? Just a time why, check. Why do you bring that up? Because this girl put in a long day today. Okay. Sounds like you're a prostitute. That would be in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> that, this is my evening job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's it. I'm tired. I think I should do. Maybe I should make a, a gay porno film about a gay male prostitute and call it a hard day's night hard. <laughs> huh? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. They make all these movies and stuff. They where they do people like that. Anyway, so um, uh, anyway, so you know, um, I uh, uh, I just don't. You know, uh, certain doctors I've liked. I mean, they, this current urologist I have, I like only because he does answer my questions and he doesn't seem to really doesn't be use panicking. the old finger. But he wanted me to go get this PSA test again, and at my age, it is recommended that I not get a PSA test. I understand, test. but he wanted it done, so you do it. So I do it, but he, on the other hand. Uh, just said to me, and if it goes up, no big deal. He says, we'll just uh, do a sonogram and see, make sure it's nothing serious. There you go. Because these PSA tests are a piece of shit. They have been so discredited. And because of the minor chance that it could predict that somebody has cancer, they well, keep doing Are there any other tests that no, they can use? No. No. But the, even the guy who invented the PSA test has since said it's, it's, Doesn't it's, work. it's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, in, in something like 25% of the people who have a massively aggressive rising velocity in their PSA, they will find cancer. Now, whether it's aggressive or not is another story altogether. But that's 25%. That means there's a 75% chance that you don't have it. And what may happen when it rises is they do things like biopsies which can cause infections, it can cause sure. all kinds of problems. In fact, m m a lot of you should refuse a biopsy before they check a bunch of other stuff first because I know Phil had a biopsy, and these things can, uh, these things can go really wrong on you. Is so Phil okay now? Phil's uh, not okay. No, he's... Is he still waiting for the insurance to switch? No, no, he's, gonna, he's probably going to have the prostate removed. Is it going to but Europe I, to do I, it? But I would, if I were him, see, I would get a second opinion. He hasn't gotten a second opinion? Well, he goes to Kaiser. There is no second opinion oh, at Jesus. Kaiser. Why does he go to Kaiser? Well, he, he, it's his medical. But he has matter. money. He can get a good policy. No, but policy. Kaiser's, Kaiser's good. But you have to go to their but doctors. If, but if you say, I want a second opinion, you have to go outside of Kaiser and, and they don't pay, pay for it. Wow. Yeah. So, you know. That's not good. So you got you to gotta go with the... You can't go to another doctor inside that program? You might be able to ask for another doctor. Yeah. You know, Just I don't to know. see. Wow. Maybe if, when Phil calls, I'll ask him. We'll ask him. Okay. Well, my dear, it's 1027. Well, you know, it's like, this is kind of like how you treat me in my entire life. Number one, she doesn't have dinner with me anymore. Well, I'm catching up with girlfriends. That's your excuse. I think it's a guy. But... <laughs> You know, I have no idea what it is, you know. Well, you follow me on, on Find Your Friend. Now, you see, on Chrome, this thing fucks up, it stops up on me. And on, uh, 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 on, on Safari, no problem at all. So I think there's a problem with Chrome. That could be. Yeah. The pro I think it may be that I have like, I have like, how many tabs here? One, two, three, you have too four, many. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one tabs. You're the one that told me when I was complaining because that ball was going around that I had too much stuff open. Well, no, the too many programs open. On Chrome. Yeah. No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Well, anyway, I've got, but I've got a lot of memory in this machine. All right, can I roll but over? But I think it's, I think it's a problem with Chrome. Tell you roll the me truth. over roll in the clover. Over. Roll me over, no, lay right. me down. Do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa. We don't want that. You don't we, want me to roll over yet? No, wait a minute, hold on a second. I get to put on my camera. Hi. Okay. Hello. This, this thing is, uh, it's, 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 a, it's strange. But it works. Okay, now, now you can there come over goes. here. There, there you are. There you are. And let me, let me see here. Panel. I got to get the panel up there. Hi. 
Okay. All the way in the what? Corner. I have to. I see. I have to. I'm doing a, a program here, and at the same time, I'm switching the show, and I'm doing the well, whole thing with producer. the video. You're, and you're, you're, you're a broadcaster you're, slash producer. No, I'm not a broadcaster slash producer. I don't slash anything. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Let me. Oh, I forgot to turn that on when I see. I started it. I so I have to sign in to Skype. Okay. Hmm. And here's my password. It's our secret password. I know what it is. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> you have no idea what it is, actually. No, it's not the one that it always is. It's not my usual. I have I have usuals, and then I have the others that aren't usuals. Uh, what I do is I, I have my I, 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 well, I have my primary, then I have my secondary, then I have my third area or I have whatever. That too. Yeah. So you know. Here and the worst are. is when you have to reset it, and they say you've already used that password. Come up with another. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I love that when they yeah. do that. That that deal. Yeah, come up with another one. All right, guys, call in. So Ten it's seven. no, it's no longer one, two, three, four, five. Now it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And passwords. I'm joking. Oh. Do you know what the most common password people use? Is? Monkey. No. You told me that no, that was a no, very common. No, no, no. What? Um, password. Password. Yeah. Password, password one. Password two. Password three. Oh, now three. I'm gonna have to change all my passwords. Because no. Of you, because of well, you and your big mouth. They don't know that what I said was yours. The <laughs> boot. <laughs> well. You better not change it. It isn't. I, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. But I had heard that that was a very common one. I long since have changed it. Yes, you uh, have. I have, and I don't, I don't, I haven't memorized your new stuff yet. I have to write it. Well, down. you know what they want? They want you with passwords to do things like uh, get like really complicated passwords, you know. And you go, well, why do I have to have a complicated password, you know? And and oh, it should be at least ten, and it shouldn't be any random whatever. And I just go, geez, you know, come on, I. I I don't care if somebody steals my fucking identity. Blow me, you know? <laughs> I put a freeze on that. You put a freeze on what? On all three of the credit uh, agencies. Here. Yeah. All three of the credit agencies. Yeah. How's mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah. You look like, I look, it looks like you're my, my, my dummy and I'm the ventriloquist. Just move your mouth. So how are no not when I start talking okay. when, when I start doing the voice, okay. so how no don't do that wait until I do a voice you see, okay so, so don't move your mouth I hear a voice I'll, coming I'll out. tap you when I want you to move your okay. mouth okay okay so how are you Marjorie I I'm got really to know about no that. you're not supposed to talk you're just supposed to, this is never okay, okay. try it one more time so how are you so how, how are you Marjorie I'm fine thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember but, that girl? What do, what, do, what, do, what do you think of your husband, Alex? I think he's the most wonderful person in the entire world. <laughs> do you remember the girl, the one Britain's Got Talent? America's Got Talent. She was so good, and she sang. No, it's Britain's Got Talent. It was America. Oh, oh America's Got Talent. The, the ventriloquist. Yeah. And, but not only was she, she was a singer. And she could get notes. There was a ventriloquist on the British version, though, that would take a person out of the audience and put an apparatus on their face. Oh, no. You remember that woman who was a ventriloquist on that show that Christopher Surf did on HBO? She was one of the lead characters, and she was a ventriloquist. Well, she really is a ventriloquist. She has a bit where she brings somebody up out of the audience and puts an apparatus on their face, and it's the mouth moves because she's... <laughs> You know, and so she uses a real human being as a as, a, as, a, as, a, as her a, as dummy. A dummy. Uh, I've I've had this Scabnet Live open now. Our Skype thing for five open minutes. For five minutes. Where are the calls? And nobody's calling. This is not fair because you're going to make. You're me talking to the microphone. What? This is not fair. Please call. Why is why are why aren't they calling? They're bored. Oh, there we go. Phil. So we get, find out about his cancer. <laughs> Yo, that's 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 a happy notion. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening? Hey, Phil. Hey, good evening. Yeah, there he uh, is. How's your prostate? Uh, compared to who? Alex. 
<laughs> Mine's got cancer. <laughs> now somebody else has to call so he's not out of sync. This uh, is the latest the thing we found one, out about Skype. That's the first been for person. a while. Yeah, the first person. As soon as somebody else calls, he will be in perfect sync. He's treating me like a ventriloquist. Yeah. That's, you look like a ah. Uh, Here we yeah. go. Here comes uh, Anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, I did get a second opinion. And? That's what made me determine that I was going to get it ripped out. The whole thing? Yeah. Are you doing it here? Talk yes. Me. When are you going at, to do at it? At Kaiser. When? Probably in January. Why are you waiting? Well, it's, it's slow. It's not aggressive. It's not aggressive. Uh, yeah, I could probably wait longer, but uh, I, I'm tired of the uh, uh, BPH symptoms. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm ready. Tear it out. Just get it out. Now, did they? Uh, uh, um, so you did get a second opinion. Yes. A at Kaiser. Yes. And well, what did he say? Uh, he said that uh, I asked him. I said, if this was your father or your brother, what would you recommend? And he said. Uh, he wouldn't recommend the therapy that, um, oh, what's his name got in Czechoslovakia? Yeah. He said that um, it's experimental, and with many of these things, the cancer comes back. Is that the one with the seeds? No, no, uh, no that was, this was the one. With the, this is where you don't get near pregnant women for a, a month. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's called proton therapy, which they say is very, very good, but it's experimental. That was the one that I thought I was going to get. Uh, but even if I got the proton therapy, I still have a very enlarged prostate, and therefore I have all the other issues with it. Uh, and so uh, the seeds, my prostate's too large to do the seeds. It's four or five times larger than a normal by the way, prostate. By the way, Mike, you can turn your camera on now if you want to. Are you there, Mike? Mike's not even there. Oh, well, let me, get rid of, let me get rid of it. Uh, Go back, Mike. Yeah. So um, uh, what, the, uh, what the story is, the seeds, uh, it's very common for the, uh, if they do the seeds with someone with the uh, prostate under 60 milligrams, I think, uh, the, uh, there's been many cases where the cancer came back. Is that what happened with your friend? You know, I I, he, I think so. He had a very mild. They gave him the seeds. Everything was good. And then they retired and went to Portland, Oregon. And it came back aggressively. And six months later, he was dead. Right. I mean, it went to uh, his brain. It went it went all over. It's all his well, organs. They, they told me that the next place it goes is the bone. Right. So it went I, to the bone. Then it went to his head, his brain. Right. So I had a... Uh, uh, a scan, uh, scan where they inject you with some dye, right. uh, radioactive dye, and they found that uh, the there was no transfer to the bone. So uh, at this point, I figure, hey, if I don't have to go through chemo, uh, if I can get rid of these BPH symptoms uh, and uh, and live a fairly normal life, rip the damn thing out. Yeah. Good. Yeah. At least, oh, it's all gone. Yeah. Good. I guess. Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, you believe what we're talking about? 20 years ago, we'd be talking about dating. Uh, yeah, you and I'd be talking about uh, how, somebody we just fucked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, if, if, if uh, let's say tomorrow my, or Monday, my doctor says we got to get rid of your prostate, I go, well, I had a, quite a few good years with it, you know. Uh, your mile, actual mileage may vary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I figure the same thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's not over. It's, uh, it's just the sheets stay cleaner. It's not <laughs> over until it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Jason. How hey, are Jason. you? Hey, Jason. Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's okay. Hey, question yeah. for you, Phil. If you get your prostate ripped out, do you still have the big O? I guess the so you what? just don't have you don't, you don't have ejaculation but you can have a, a hard you, you can feel a kind of you could get you know. hard yeah uh, it's not even getting hard it's well, just i'm on a, i'm on a lot of i'm on a couple of drugs that keep it small the prostate <laughs> small and keep it soft and uh, they prevent it's definitely me soft. They, they prevent me from having a jack <laughs> they prevent me from having ejaculate but they don't prevent oh, me from well, having yeah, they it, don't it, prevent me from right they don't uh, prevent me yeah. from having an orgasm <laughs> No, with the finasteride, you get ejaculations, but they stay inside. 
Uh, what do they call that? It's uh, called the, the word for... retrograde uh, Retro- ejaculation. Retro- ejaculation. Uh, did we all learn a new term today, <laughs> folks, here on the program? Retrograde <laughs> ejaculation. Uh, hi there, Patrick. Hi, say, Patrick. Say it with me, Patrick. Retrograde ejaculation. I probably knew that before you guys did. I learned all about that when I got paralyzed. Oh, I see. Okay. Do you have retrograde ejaculation? No. But it was one of the, it was one of the things that could have happened. Yeah. No, I can I can get it on just as, as well as I could beforehand. So you, you can still make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a mess, and nobody wants to lay in that wet spot. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, you know, could you play the piano before uh, you uh, uh, went into the wheelchair? No, I couldn't. Oh, yeah. no. Well, you know, that would be, that'd be yes, I, I, yes, doctor, I could have played. I, I, uh, he said, I didn't play the piano before, right? Uh, that's a funny thought, you know, a, por- a porn actor with retrograde ejaculation. <laughs> He's out of work. Yeah. He doesn't come, he goes. You know, I mean. He goes on the sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, but, uh, you know, I've been, I've been studying up on the PSA because I'm waiting for my PSA to come back. And I found out that losing all that weight could have made my PSA go up. Oh, well, I want to know my PSA went up and I am heavy. Well, not really heavy, but I'm heavy and I didn't, I, you know, I've lost weight, but not to the extent that you did. And I would still be considered obese. Yeah. Uh, Based on my that, weight oh, and my that, BMI. Yeah, well, it might be it might be a point higher if you lost sixty pounds. You know, in other words, and also advanced age, as they say. And I guess I could consider be considered having advanced age, or, uh, or uh, can, like to can say, cause it to go up. You you're, know, you're in the last chapter. Will you stop <laughs> it with this last chapter crap? <laughs> The epilogue. My life, <laughs> my life is in a fucking book. God damn it! You know, you can't order it from Amazon. All right. No. But, but um, uh, you know, it, 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 it the, the the PSA test is a very controversial thing now. Oh yeah, uh, you you can't use it as the as the end all and be all. Of uh, of it, but, but they, what else yeah. did they do? If that's if that was the only test, a biopsy. No, uh, uh, you know, the bet. Their finger uh, up uh, your uh, ass. Put a <laughs> no, finger, no, no, really, you're. Uh, that's right. Putting a finger up your ass is better than the. the, 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 uh, than the what you, what they do is if the PSA goes up, they go. Let's put my finger up your ass and see if you got any cancer there. Or my doctor will do a, a sonogram. A sonogram, which is is fine. You know, if he doesn't find anything with the sonogram, it's probably not there to be found. You know, so. Well, uh, with me, they also did um, a, a CT scan, yeah. uh, which is another one where they shoot you up, and they were able to see that the shape of the prostate sort of indicated that the cancer was just in one area. That's, yeah, yeah, that's good, I guess. And you know, at my age, I could, ha- uh, uh, you know, most guys my age, if we live long enough, you you'll get it, you'll get prostate cancer, but it was so non-aggressive that they figure you could live out your normal lifespan without ever having to worry about it. And they just keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't... doesn't. It's something else will probably get you before. Yeah, yeah. You know. The bus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I figure is going to go on me? I, I figured this out. My legs are going. Gonna They're like go. rubber. They're going to go. That's because you don't walk. I'm going to be... Yeah, okay. you need I'm, to get your I'm, ass out of the apartment and go for a walk. I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to call Patrick for hints. <laughs> Well, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, I feel that my, uh, my like with my knee going bad and things like that, you know, all that kind of crap, that I'm, this is going to be the feet, the legs. I'm going to be, you're going to, you're going to, oh, I'm going to, first it's a walker and then it's a wheelchair. Mine's going to be joints bones. that go. And it's just from years of, uh, of, yes. of beating them up. Yeah. You I, know, I don't beat my, them up. I haven't used them. I had a theory. <laughs> and when I told this to Richard Simmons once, he almost had a heart attack. I, I, he said, and you should exercise. Exercise is good for you. And I said, I don't exercise. And he said, why? And I said, because I have a theory that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. Well, I'm and, I, you don't he, have and I, I think I had to find a stick to put, <laughs> keep him from swallowing his tongue when he heard that one. You know. Yeah, 
you know, my joints, one of the things they learned with the CT scan is at least it told me why I was in pain. Uh, my neck, my low back, my hands, and my feet have arthritis. Oh, and, really? Uh, and, you know, so I, I don't have a real spine. good range of motion uh, in my neck. I can't turn it very far. Well, you know, this is, this show is really for old people. <laughs> I should very, change this show. It's so depressing. I should <laughs> re I can, <laughs> starting Monday, I'm renaming the show God's Waiting Room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what no. I'm going to do. Starting Monday, I'm going to put it up there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make up a, a slide and an animation and everything. God's, welcome to God's it's Waiting, waiting room. room. You know, because cool. look at us. What are we talking about? I mean, well, it was a subject that I was invited to talk about uh, during the first half hour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, Patrick is about the only one of us that uh, that's, that's under the age of 50. Well, I mean, well, Jason, you're how old, Jason? Jason's the youngest. Yeah, I'm 37. He's 37. So, you know. But we could, you could still join God's waiting room, you know. Yeah, you know, every day is another day closer to it. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks, that, that, Bill. That's true. <laughs> that, you're absolutely right. And with that, guys, I am going to say good night. No, oh, well, good night, dear. Good night, my good darling. Good night. good night, guys. We'd tongue kiss, but it would make the rest of you vomit. I'm wearing so. shorts today. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Look at those hot varicose veins, I man. The they are. Veins. Uh, huh? I do not have those. Now, have, do you know who the actress is that plays? Uh, there's a thing called difficult people, and the uh, the the woman uh, who is the star of the show has a mother who is a psychologist or psychiatrist, and she looks a lot like Marjorie. Have Have you seen that character on that no, show? No, I haven't seen the show. No, oh. I haven't seen the show. It, it's difficult to watch, just as much as it's called difficult people. <laughs> a, a, after a few episodes, it gets old, but uh, it's cute. I watch a show called "You're the Worst," and after and now it's in its like fifth season or something, and it finally is the worst. It yeah. just got the show is not good anymore, and I, I went, "Gee, the title now fits." You're the worst, it, you know. It jumped the shark. It did jump. Yeah. You you watched it too, right, Jason? Yeah, I watched it. Was, it. Ever, ever since they, you know, broke up and she went crazy or whatever. Yeah, the first, know, the happens. first couple of years, man, that show was unbelievably funny. How did Below the Deck make it five seasons? Below the Deck? Oh, you mean uh, Mediterranean? Below the Deck? That show? Well, they there's different uh, other seasons uh, have them in different places. They were in yeah. Saint Bart's uh, yeah. right now. Hey, look who's here, Mark Thorner. How are you, Mark? Hey. Hey, is this the old Codgers hotline? Yeah, thanks for calling the old... It's God's waiting room. Yeah, right. Yeah. Name your ailment. Name your bills. <laughs> but, hey, but, have you called in since the hurricane? I know you, you, you called like right before it or the day of. No, I haven't. How'd you guys fare? Because you guys got dead center, uh, right? Yeah, well, I was literally uh, in dead center. Oh yeah, because I, mean, I, I sent you a note saying, "We well, hope you're hope you're safe." You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, when the report that, oh, by the way, yeah, um, it's going to be crawling up your butt anytime soon. What? My, my yes, my urologist on Monday. I have an appointment with him. Oh. oh. <laughs> it, so. It was, did you have any flooding or any any damage, Mark? I didn't have damage in my home. My mom's building, yeah, uh, there was some damage, but uh, they the building came through okay, actually. And isn't so, that where you actually were? No, I remember him, Mark. I remember you saying you were going to go to your mom's place because it was three stories up or something. And uh, five story. It's a very strong building. Yeah, but long story short, some. Some of the residents didn't have hurricane shutters or hurricane glass, ah. so that caused some that caused some problems in the building. Um, also, the fact that I watched a tornado literally take the contents of a pool out and then dump it back in. Wow! Yeah, that's kind of. Did you see it actually happen? Yep. Did you get any pictures? Yep. So what happened? The water just went straight up in the air. It went straight up. 
the I mean, you saw the water level go way down, and then it got dumped right back in. Where you post your pictures? What on wow, Twitter? Wow, that would or that, that would be great to be in the pool when that happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this was this was really scary yeah, shit. Yeah. Alex. That'd be this a new. That'd be, they could make it into a new ride at Orlando. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, 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 and the thrill of riding on the highways of Florida. Yeah. That'd be a real good ride. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we lived, we survived this thing and, uh, what can I tell you? Wow. Well, we're, we're glad you're safe. And then of course, hey. then we have Damien, uh, who is, you know, Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa. He is the luckiest human being on the planet because so, everything around him, he lives in the, uh, he runs a storage facility. And as yeah. a courtesy to the, uh, and to have your your uh, your manager on premises, they, they have an apartment there, very nice apartment in the storage facility area. And so his home was there. Right. Everything around him burned to a cinder. The storage uh, space was fine. You know, he's back yeah. in his house and everything. And he, he says he feels quite fortunate, you know. But you must yeah. have some kind of horrible survivor's guilt, too, you know. That, you know, everybody around me, my neighbors, my friends, you know, they got in trouble and I'm surviving. I kind of felt that way a little bit in the, uh, in, uh, the uh, marina when we had the earthquake. Uh, because I, I survived it okay. My place just had cracks in the wall and things like that, you know, that were easily fixable. And I lost like a, a bookcase. But other people lost their entire homes. You know, they had to get out of them. And they had like an hour to do it. Uh, they would go in with a fire marshal and they would pack whatever they could and took all their belongings with them. And you kind of feel a, a certain, you know, um, guilt about that so do you feel any yeah, so they're dealing with a lot of that what dealing with a lot of that up there right now yeah 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 i said they're dealing with a lot of that up there right now they're talking about it yeah that people are feeling guilty because they made it i saw this story which was actually it was a nice story i think it was maybe it was on nbc nightly news of a postman who is still making his rounds every day to deliver the mail to the people? Yeah, in the, right. you know, and there are these burnt out houses with a with a mailbox that's fallen down. He's putting the mail in there, and yep. and he, it, he people have been thanking him for it because it gives them some semblance of of, of order getting their mail. Yeah, you know, uh, but I mean, literally, here's this truck going through just nothing, devastation. You know, and there are a few houses that weren't touched. That's the other yep. amazing part of it. It looks just like Detroit. It looks just like <laughs> Detroit. Right. You know, but uh, anyway, well, last night was supposedly the equinox of sports in which every major sport we know had a major game of some sort or another. Uh, you had the you know the world the playoffs towards the World Series for the you know the division playoffs, and then the National Hockey League had some division playoffs, and there were something going on oh, in I'm football. Just, <clears throat> it was they they're just starting. They called it the not the equinox the uh, well, what's the thing when the when the sun passes by the moon uh, the eclipse they called it, it was the sports eclipse, you know. But anyway. Is anything big happening tonight in sports that we should worry about? I know that Rob has not been with us all week because he's a big baseball fan. Yeah, and the Yankees are losing right now. I think are they really? Yep. I, I won't Yay! say I, I won't say I'm hoping they will, so we'll get Rob back. But you know, I mean, I'm hoping they <laughs> win for Rob's sake. How's that? Well, yeah. If it's a they, they obviously. Won a uh, Dodgers New York World Series. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're still playing the Astros, right? Yeah, yeah. See, I want the, the, the Dodgers are in. The Dodgers right. got in last night. 
Well, our, uh, well the Dodgers our are, from the, Detroit. What would be place interesting the Astros now. is if the Dodgers win and then the Yankees win. Okay, it would be it would be a a a, a crosstown series by proxy, a subway series by proxy. Uh, because the Dodgers used to be in New York, and you used to have a subway series, uh, but I guess yeah. you could say it was a subway series by proxy. Because there are some kids out there who, to this day, will not admit that the Dodgers are in Los Angeles. Uh, they're not kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Steve Gruberg, who died a few years back, uh, he was a major Dodger fan when he was a kid. He was like the head of the Dodgers rooting group or whatever, you know, as a kid. And the kids, of course, love the Dodgers because especially because if you lived in Brooklyn, they, they most of them lived in your neighborhood. Am I right, Mark? That's right. You know, and uh, they had regular jobs, too, uh, during the off season. Did they really? I didn't know yeah. that. Is that how bad uh, they were paying them? Well, in the 50s, uh, my stepfather, my mother's second husband, yeah. uh, was a baseball player, pro, pro baseball player. I, I think it was with the White Sox. Yeah. And uh, he, on an off season, he was a TV repair guy. You know, you had the tubes. He worked yeah. for Motorola. And after his, uh, you know, uh, walk of uh, shame or whatever it was that uh, when he was playing baseball, uh, he, he spent the rest of his career working for Motorola. <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, the point I'm making is is that... A Magnavox. That when, the, when the Dodgers left New York, left Brooklyn, uh, he was devastated, he told me. Just devastated. And kids he knew and kids who were his pals who loved the Dodgers were absolutely devastated by that move. And uh, in some ways, he I think he still remained a Dodger fan anyway. Even though they were in Los Angeles. Uh, did you find that? You, you lived in New York, Mark. Did you find your friends were that way? That they remained Dodger fanatics anyway? No, that my parents, when the Dodgers left, baseball was dead for them. Really? You yeah. Know, I, I was born in 54. When did the Dodgers leave? 55? 50? No, I have, no, like 57, 58, I think. You know, All right. What happened but, was there was a very interesting thing that went on. See, I mean... The Dodgers decided to move to the West Coast. Now, on the West Coast, you never had Major League Baseball. We had what they called the Pacific Coast League. Exactly. And, and they were also... The, 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 Oakland Oaks. Oakland Oaks, uh, San Francisco. The Seals. The Seals in San Francisco. Joe DiMaggio right. played with the Seals. That's right. where he started. And these were all... Stadium. It, these, all, yes, absolutely. And these were all farm teams as well. Um but there were no major teams, I think, west of the Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. And all of a sudden, the Dodgers go to L.A. And one of the reasons they went to L.A. is because they wanted to build a new stadium here in Brooklyn, and the city of New York wouldn't do it for them. No, no. Uh, well, Robert Moses. Robert Moses. Well, I was going to say Robert Moses was a, opposed see, to uh, it. Did you see there was a great documentary HBO did? Oh my! The boys of summer. Oh, no. Wait, well, what? But what the Dodgers wanted to do, mm -hmm. and I think this is where. What's what's the big sports arena that they Barclays Center in Brooklyn? Right. That area. Yeah. They wanted to build an enclosed, like a Buckminster Fuller domed baseball stadium. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it's super modern. This would have been a super modern. It would have revitalized that part of Brooklyn. Moses put the kibosh on it. And you know what? I don't blame the Dodgers for doing what they did. And then, so the Dodgers got an offer from, uh, from uh, uh, L.A., and they went. Well, there was a problem with that because all of a sudden they'd be sitting out there on the West Coast with their team and nobody else on the West Coast, uh, and they'd be kind of like, you know, out there and the question was could they survive that way so branch ricky i think who was the head of the team at the time went over and talked to another team here in new york that wasn't doing as well called the giants yeah and convinced them to go to san francisco and the incentives for both of them were great because the incentives were they would build them a stadium uh or, or uh, and and uh it wouldn't cost them anything 
right? And they wouldn't have any big tax problems or any of that stuff. Oh. So, so the Giants went to San Francisco and the Dodgers went to L.A. And all of a sudden that made ve- baseball viable as a West Coast sport, okay? Uh, and uh, the rest is history because then you had the Houston Astros and you had the Phoenix team and uh, what other teams are, you know, uh, uh, you know west of the, uh, of the Mississippi. But up until that time, kids like me grew up, we didn't give a shit about baseball. We didn't know about baseball. You know, and yeah, we had the Oakland Oaks and we had the Seals, but nobody gave a shit about that, really. You know, they were, that was play, uh, that was play acting. You know, but then the Giants came, that was a big deal for San Francisco. You know, yeah. and, uh, and it was a, you know, it changed, it changed the whole nature of the game. But, uh, well, uh, we talked about that. Want to get back to prostates? Uh, uh, Mike. When did Calistic Park open up? In the 50s? Yeah. Had, had, whenever, the, whenever the Giants came out. I think they built Candlestick, didn't they, for the Giants, uh, Phil? 50. Uh, probably. Yeah. Or? Uh, no, they came out. Uh, well, 57? the Dodgers came out in 57. Uh, 57 uh, it was sometime around that or later than the Giants would have come out. Yeah. But they, they finally they finally had to move that baseball out of there because uh, it was, you know, it was, again, it was one of those facilities that was built that you played baseball and then they reconfigured it and you could play football in it. It was so cold there. And it was so the cold. Weather, yeah, yeah. Weather was awful. And... Uh, it was it was not a very conducive place to be and a good place to be. It was it was miserable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I liked it it's when they started. Right now. I liked it when they started building these baseball only stadiums now again. You know what we call brickyards, and and uh, 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 the stadium in San Francisco is terrific. I mean, it's basically it's a ballpark. There's very little else you can do except hold concerts there. And nearby, we're going to have a, the Warrior uh, uh, Coles- uh, the Warrior Arena uh, for the basketball uh, near the uh, AT&T Park or Pac-Bell, yeah. whatever they call it. Yeah, how are the Sharks? Yeah, how- traffic ought to be lovely. How are the Sharks yeah. doing with, uh, with hockey? Are they getting any crowds at all? I don't follow it, but I think that they're a championship yeah. team or they, they're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they, yeah. they now well, years ago nobody followed them, but now they're uh, if you like hockey, I guess uh, they've probably sold out every game since 1991. They have not had a problem. I, I go to games all the time. I love really? hockey, <clears throat> and uh, the Sharks are because I have quite good. in storage, uh, um, and you can probably find it, Damien, if it's there, a hockey stick. I think I kept it signed by all of the Sharks. And they gave well, me a hot leather jacket with a. Let shirt. me know if you want to sell it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't know if I I'll still have it. Or I don't know if I gave it away or whether I still have it. You know, well, Damien probably knows he would have moved it. If he got one from uh, '91, you got a good piece of memorabilia there. Well, well this, this, this is more no. This is more like uh, well, hey, it could be '91. Yeah. Why? '91 when they played in. Uh, uh, the Cow Palace, and then '94 they moved down to San Jose. I worked on that stadium. I delivered all the uh, the uh, lockers and the cabinetry for all the luxury uh, suites and stuff. We were storing them in a the, warehouse down the street. By, by the way, let me mention something to the people listening because they may they may have heard something here and then went what. When we say the name of this one particular place, we don't think anything of it if we live in the Bay Area. The Cow Palace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But imagine somebody yeah. who doesn't live in San Francisco yeah. and never heard about it, and you go, oh, uh, where, where's, uh, where, where did you go to see Prince? Oh, I went to the Cow Palace. I yeah. saw the Cow show. Palace. And or as I, I used <laughs> to like to call it, I renamed it. I said the, the trouble with the Cow Palace. In a lot of ways, it was. With, the trouble with the Cow Palace, I used to say, was that the Cow Palace uh, was 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 burdened by its own name. I mean, you know, yeah. and that they should f- turn it into the French name and call it the Palais du Vache. You oh, know? There you go. Uh, they also have gun shows there. Yeah. 
I well, that's where I worked the Republican convention in nineteen. Well, what year was it? Fifty-eight. Yeah, I think it was fifty-eight. Nineteen fifty-eight. Maybe fifty-six. What year was that? It's still there. Uh, fifty-six or fifty-five because oh, oh, uh, 56, sixty yeah. was when Kennedy was elected. So four years prior to that would have been uh, Eisenhower. And yeah, because I I got a job as a page 56. boy as a page boy for CBS. And I was assigned to the control room where I watched. Uh, um, who was the guy who did sixty minutes? Uh, started sixty minutes. Um, Wally Safer? No, 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 no. Wallace? The director, the the producer. Oh. Uh, um, he was the director on it, and um, I uh, I would do things like I had to go get by some antacid for Walter Cronkite, so I kept him from throwing up on national television. Hey, I did my job. <laughs> Uh, and uh, then I then I, they told me, uh, would you take this to Mr. Murrow's office, please? So I went over, uh, and Ed Murrow, you know, was always smoking on television, right? I walk into Ed Murrow's office. I swear to you, I couldn't find him. There was so much smoke in that room. <laughs> I think I got cancer just walking into Ed Murrow's office. But I gave whoever I had to give it to. But my classic story about working at the Republic, it was the Republican convention, is that uh, I'm, I'm sitting there in, in the control room because that was my place to be so they could say, Page Boy, we need you to go get Walter Cronkite some antacid or Page Boy, we need you to do this or Page Boy, we need you to do that. And I had this little armband that said CBS, you know, and it was, it was wonderful. I had to wear a, a, sports, a sports coat and, a, you know, sports pants. And um, they said, uh, we want you to go here and take Mrs. Uh, Paley to her oh seat in the, in the, in the, you know, in the stadium, uh, in the cow palace. I think, I think it was Paley. Either, either, either it was Stanton. Maybe it was Mrs. Stanton. It was either Stanton or Paley. Who cares? They were the two biggest guys in broadcasting, right? So please take Miss, Mrs. Paley and her entourage to their seats in the uh, in the cow palace in the in the arena. So I say, yeah, come along with me, and I'm being very courteous and very nice, and they're following me. And as I you walk up this ramp, you know how you walk up the ramp in those kind of arenas, and then all of a sudden you're presented with the whole arena. And I'm walking up the ramp, and just I'm walking up the ramp. Somebody on the podium says, and I place in nomination for Vice President of the United States, Richard M. Nixon. And the band uh. starts playing, and somebody puts a sign in my hand that says, Nixon's the one. And I am now <laughs> just losing Mrs. Paley and being forced to march around the, uh, because there's this whole just cordon of people pushing me and i'm saying i'm not doing i'm not with them and i'm you know and i'm holding this fucking sign nixon's the one and i'm thinking my father hates fucking nixon i hope he doesn't see this on television you know Wasn't nixon you're, one you're on some kind of these and finally finally i don't know i got rid of the sign and i and i got back to mrs paley and i said i'm very sorry about this you know and she said oh, it's quite all right i said you know nothing can do it. i took them into their seats um, my Wasn't father, my same? father was working the same convention and he had to uh, go out and he was there with, uh, I can't remember one, uh, 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 how many words are there in Eisenhower, letters are there in Eisenhower? Nine? Something like that? Nine letters in Eisenhower? Somebody, somebody do it quick. Does anybody, it could be ten. Okay. Huh? Ten? 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 Okay. So there were ten violinists, okay? And they all had on their backs, or either on their fronts or something, one of the letters that spelled out Eisenhower. <laughs> and as they're standing out there on the stage getting ready to go on with Eisenhower, okay, across, it spelled, it was on their chest, it was spelled as they, as they would play, Okay. Uh, my father, always being the same, this is where I get my attitude from, 
looked at all the other guys and went, you do realize that if they just decided to spell Ike, seven of us would be out of work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ten in Huh? Ten in Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. So... Anyway, that was, but I but I, I enjoyed working that. Uh, I worked with, uh, one of the people I worked with was Betty Furness. You remember Betty Furness? Because the whole thing was sponsored by Westinghouse. And that oh. was the that was the incident where they had this, Westinghouse came with this idea, a refrigerator in which the door would open up either way. It had like a V thing on the front. If you pulled it this way, the door would open one way. And if you pushed the other way, the door would open the other way. And on this broadcast, this was one of the, she would do the commercials live. They would say, now we go to Betty Furness for this word from Westinghouse, who's presenting you with this convention coverage. And they go to her, and she says, this is our lovely new Westinghouse refrigerator, and it opens from either side, and she pulls down on it, and the whole door falls off. Oh. <laughs> Something similar happened to a friend of mine, John Lawhon. He used to do commercials. In, uh, he had a furniture business in the early 60s and 50s. Yeah. Uh, he had stores in the Midwest, and he was he used to televise his commercials. You know, there was three or four uh, places, and that was it. And if you watch uh, the bloopers, uh, there's, a, there's a string of blooper episodes, and him doing a, a, blue, uh, a TV commercial for a Frigidaire, uh, the, uh, he was trying to demonstrate how the door didn't tweak. So, therefore, uh, you wouldn't get the, um, uh, the, the elements freezing over. And so when he went and he took the door and he tried to, try to tweak it, it fe the refrigerator what fell mean, over. What do you mean tweak it? Well, uh, the door, uh, you see, what happened with uh, refrigerators prior to the Frigidaire was that the doors uh, would get out of square. Uh, and what Frigidaire did was they put uh, a, a thing inside the door that caused tension so that it would stay square and it wouldn't lose its seal. And so you could actually twist the door and 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 make it lose its seal so he would demonstrate that and then he would demonstrate how by this invention uh that frigidaire did it, it wouldn't lose the seal so your stuff wouldn't freeze over you know the elements you ever see a you know before frost free freezers uh this is, this oh, is i what remember happens. i remember before frost free freezers that you you would have to melt your refrigerator every now and then otherwise with your freezer, eventually you would just have this like mail slot that you could right, put right. something in well, because the ice had so grown around it. Very similar. And, and one of the reasons that happens is because of air leaks that would go past the seal. So John Lawhon uh, used to demonstrate how this freezer. Uh, well, what would, happened? We'll just get to cut to the chase. What happened? The, the refrigerator fell over on him. Oh. And, they, and they caught it on tape, <laughs> and it was during the uh, during did the commercial. Hurt, did, it it hurt, did, it hurt, did it hurt him? No. Oh, okay. Gee, yeah, that wouldn't be a funny blooper at all. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if I can, I wonder if somewhere <clears throat> on 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 YouTube they actually have Betty Furness opening up the door and having it fall off. I bet I bet somewhere you can find that. You know. Yeah. But anyway, you see Mark's finger Mark, to say something. What 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 did you say, Mark? Didn't uh, Betty Furness end up on NBC television news in New York for many years? Yes, Betty Furness became the consumer uh, uh, advocate. The, 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 uh, consumer advocate on uh, on uh, 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 NBC in New York, but she yes. got into some kind of yeah. What was what was the there was something with I don't know with. Koch or somebody, there was something, she, she was the head of consumer affairs in New York. That was her job. And mm. she lost it because of some kind of, uh, of, of uh, scandal. And I'm trying to remember what the scandal was. It may have been a boyfriend, actually, that was the subject of the scandal. And by association, she, she lost her job as the head of consumer affairs in New York. You know, I should I should look it up. You know, Does somebody anybody have a computer going right there and can look up Betty Furness? None uh, of us have a computer. 
Yeah. Benny Furness, for the years, folks, she was the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, 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 what we, uh, she was the uh, Westinghouse spokesperson, as it uh, were. They have her listed in, in Wikipedia as a, uh, an American actress. Yeah. Uh, she, she, advocate, she, started with, she, started, she started as an actress, yeah. Now, towards the end, does it say anything there about a scandal? Um, I'm trying to remember it. Yeah, uh, let me let me see. I'm sure that most people listening to us right now don't even know who the fuck I'm talking about. Do you, Patrick? No, but it's still an interest. I I enjoy hearing stuff. I guess. So. Yeah, you enjoy, well then you enjoy would enjoy hanging out in an old folks' home because everybody there. <laughs> if I, it, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Listen, I could go. I could probably go to like where my mother lived for a while, the Jewish home for the aged, where they have a lot of things with women and men with dementia, basically women because they outlive the men. And I could probably say Betty Furness and everybody where there would say, "Oh, I know who that is." <laughs> you know? Patrick has hearing problems. He enjoys hearing anything. Oh, <laughs> shut up! That was good. Good one. <laughs> He has, you know, he, he has the best hearing aid you can possibly get. What kind is I'm it? I'm jealous. What, has Bluetooth. What, what kind is it? Three o'clock. Uh, <laughs> that's the only hearing aid joke I know. So, yeah. Uh, did you find anything about a scandal? Uh, no, there's uh, not yet. Yeah, it, it read towards the end of her life. I think it probably happened. I don't know. Does she? She's got to be dead by now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he, don't uh, say, oh, yeah, you know, I thought Olivia, I thought Olivia, De ha I thought Olivia de Havilland was dead, and all of a sudden she died at like 102 or something like Stomach that. Stomach cancer. Got her. Oh. Uh, 1994 at 78. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Died in New York. Huh. Wow. Yeah, well, she had where she lived, you know. But no, yeah, she, she was, she was disgraced or something, and I think it had to do with a boyfriend. Uh, and it wasn't really her fault, you know. Not, uh, they haven't uh, they haven't mentioned that uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, Cowboys and finesse. And I think she was she the her, what? she cited her uh, ed, her uh, leaving or or being fired as age discrimination. Really? Yeah. Interesting. What, what from the job of the Consumer Affairs? Yeah, nineteen ninety. Wait a minute. Uh, Somebody in politics. It's a show. Yeah. Um, uh, use an excuse to fire her. Uh, uh, oh, it was the, to the Today Show that fired her. Yeah. So it was a network decision to change consumer reporting to more tabloid style for, uh, format. Uh, Furness was not happy with her uh, termination, cited age discrimination. Uh, no, I know no, what I know. he's talking about. I know what he's okay, talking about. Okay, here's John Rockwell, ladies and gentlemen. He knows New everything. New Yorker from that period. Who you're thinking of is Bess Meyerson. You're right. Who had the you're best mix. right. You're absolutely right. How could I? She be? was the commissioner of culture. I'm looking on Wiki here. 1983. Hold on a second, folks. Let me let me let me apologize for a moment. Yeah. I mixed Betty Furness up with Bess Meyerson. Well, they okay. have some similar, you know, run here, and at least with New York, in in New York City, they both were involved with. Cultural affairs or other things of that Bess sort. Bess Meyerson you know. started, I, the first time I ever saw her, she was a beautiful woman. Just a beautiful woman. She had been Miss America. She was the first Jewish Miss America. How's that? Right. 1946, I think, or something first like that. First Jewish like Miss right America, the, uh, and she wound, up, she wound up being uh, uh, a hostess on a show called The Big Surprise, which was a show they had every at noon. And they gave away a mink stole every day or a mink coat every day on the show. Mm -hmm. The and lady I, in mink, it says here, the big payoff. And I'm wondering, right. the big payoff, that was it. Yeah, lady and, in mink. And, but who is the host? I think I'm just. Oh, don't well, say here, I'm sure. I think Mike uh, Wallace. Hmm. Might have been because there were a lot of. Let's see. Actually, it doesn't. They say who the producer was, but they don't say, they don't say who the host was. Uh, she substituted for Dave Garraway on the Today Show off and on, yeah. and also was a host of some of the TV for quite a few years of the Miss America pageant. That's she was right. the TV host, not the, not uh, what's his face who, not who was Bert Parks, the main guy, not Bert, you know, Parks. 
But right. well, well, wait know. a minute. Go, go look. Uh, uh, oh, look something about she was bribed. Uh, Judge yeah. Gable's daughter. Yeah, Secret Gable, the daughter of. I remember that was a famous. Okay, tell uh, what, what, know, happened, what happened? What uh, happened? Wait a minute. Gable cut. Capricio's child support payments investigations began as to whether or not uh, he had been bribed. Uh, mm -hmm. She used the Fifth Amendment. Uh, oh, Myerson was forced oh, to resign her position in the Koch administration. But you know, yeah. she was appointed originally by uh, uh, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah, by and Lindsay. Lindsay was the guy that coined the phrase the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't think so. At least he was certainly the. I don't think so. certainly popular. I think it was it Jimmy lot. Walker. If you, if you, but, uh, yeah. I, th I think it was Jimmy Walker. And Rudy Giuliani uh, indicted uh, indicted Bess on that. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. But hold on, back up. What was she indicted for? Uh, uh, conspiracy mail fraud, destruction of justice, and using interstate facilities to violate state bribery laws. Okay, and, and did she get convicted? I'm uh, looking to see. No, all all three defendants were acquitted. Oh, by the Myers way, folks, let me just say that you, if you're... She it, was also arrested for shoplifting in 1988. Well, that may be. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think you're right. That was something. It was another one of those weird, South yeah. Southport, Pennsylvania, and she pled guilty. She had to right. pay a fine. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right. Exactly. My, oh, well. Uh, it, yeah, it, this see, is she all died a few years back, 2014. That's right. Yeah. Boy, we have That was a long time. She was 90. Yeah. Born 24. Wow. We have hardly any audio listeners tonight. Maybe we lost them all with Bess Meyerson and Betty Furness yeah, talk. Exactly. This is worse than talking about yeah, audio boards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe they're using the Facebook. <laughs> no, I, I don't know where everybody is tonight. Uh, you know, there are a lot of games tonight. There are, yeah, that's the other thing. You have the Giants, right? I mean, you have the, uh, the Yankees. Got the Yankees on now, and I think there are a couple other non-baseball things that people are watching. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. well, you can all listen to this <laughs> on GabNet. You know, uh, usually every night I get about double what I've got on the audio. So who knows? But anyway, uh, enough Bess Meyerson talk, uh, talk. I mixed up Betty <laughs> Furness with Bess Meyerson. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. Yeah. She became the head we're of the We're affairs. back to the elderly uh, show again, I guess. <laughs> Let me just put it this way. Uh, even though I was a much younger man at the time, I would have fucked Bess Meyerson. She was that gorgeous. She, she was that definitely sexy. was gorgeous. That's true. She, yeah. she was a hot she, 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 was she was a, a statuesque woman. <laughs> and she's, she's, I guess she's dead now, too, right? Uh, 2014. Yeah, she died at age 90. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Or she, 89, something like that, yeah. She lived a good life. Born in 24. I was, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, well, I mean, she had... Uh, I think she had some sort of cancer toward the end of it, but other than that, she was well. Look, awesome. you're going to get she some kind of ovarian cancer in the '70s, so that was it. Man, she was in California, blah 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 blah. That was it. They didn't say what she. She was reported in but, 2013 to be suffering from dementia. You know, you know but then again, you're it, 90 years it, old. Yeah, it might yeah, be. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. I'm getting dementia right now as I'm talking exactly. about this. Talking. You know. Uh, <laughs> But I like it's yeah. funny. I wonder if this is a form of dementia. My grandma is now 93 years old, 93 or 94. And, you know, she's Mexican. She grew up speaking Spanish, but she learned English. And I've only known her as speaking English to me. She forgot how to speak English. Mm. She can only speak Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good well, I, I'll tell you, I know a guy who is uh, 96 years old, 86 years old. Uh, and, um, I just got to know him in the last oh, about four or five months. Uh, and I, I love the guy. Just love the guy. And I love his, his girlfriend as well. Uh, you just, love his pussy. No. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I just love him. You know, but when you have a friend that old, you better, you know, you better not buy him uh, ripe bananas, you know, or whatever. Or buy him ripe bananas. Oh, there we go. Picture. Of, of, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, is, this, is, this, is, this, is this the thing? The Is this going to fall off? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, uh, okay. Just keep holding it up. He's right. showing us the video of it. Uh, get it more towards the center of your screen. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. That's Watch her. this happen, folks. That's got to be late, mid-50s, something like that. And, you, know, and you can just close it with The your, age of the Westinghouse uh, fridge yeah. there is probably about mid-50s. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. 
But but the thing isn't falling off yet. Well, well this is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be it? Oh, look, there's there, there was the old freezer. Put 56 pounds of food in there. How do they know it's 56 pounds? Suppose you filled it with bricks. Anyway, she's going to close the door. Come on, it's got to happen. It's got to happen, folks. It's going to happen. Are you sure this is the blooper? Are you sure this is the one where it falls off? Because I seem Not to remember sure it was enough. because it was one where it would open either way. No, that, no, it didn't. No, uh, okay, uh, okay, it was supposed to be. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse, yes. Yeah, you can be that. sure the thing will fall off if it's, it's Westinghouse. Yeah, awesome bloopers, you know. Yeah. 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 She yeah. might have said something we didn't hear, but <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, oh, well, see if you see, can find the one where the refrigerator door falls off. Yeah, no, that's I'll, I'll I don't remember that. That's that's pretty well. Yeah, yeah, but uh, and it was live TV. You know, <laughs> you, uh, wasn't much you could do about it once yeah. you you know something like that happened. Yeah. So uh, what what's happened in the news today? Has our president done anything to preoccupy the the airwaves? Do you know what I noticed? It's been pretty quiet actually. The, the, I noticed uh, they've been tell me this bitching is... and moaning about that whole thing about what he said to the to the uh, um. You know the the gold star mother or whatever, or the the wife or whatever like that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'm actually I'm actually almost on the I'm 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 actually almost on on Trump's side on that one because they're all going crazy about him saying, well, he knew that the job was going to be. It's like, well, everybody says that. Bill de Blasio says that about the cops that die in the yeah, they I, know I, I that they're think, going into something yeah, very I, you know, very I, dangerous. I, I but they go, and that's I mean, why we love them and we want to support them. This is not. But I guess the way yeah. he said it, maybe. Yeah, the, the 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 wife was sort of thinking. Well, what he say? He he had it coming. He didn't have it coming. No, no, that wasn't he what he said. He what he no, it, he knew what he signed yeah, up exactly. for. I, I just think yeah. that they're they This is way overdone. Patrick's got his hand. I got. I may agree with Phil on this. Pat, <laughs> Patrick's got his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't think Trump, as goofy as he is, set out to insult the wife. Or the oh. parent of all soldiers uh. to begin with. Now, this guy is as inarticulate as a four-year-old. We all know that. that. However, after <clears throat> hearing General Kelly yesterday explain about even when he was notified about his own son, that his best friend notified him and said, "You know that, you know he knew what he was signing up to do." And he was where he wanted to be. And that was Trump trying to emulate that ham handedly as it was. Mm. I think way out of proportion, like you said, John. Um, it's really a non issue at this point, I think, but everybody's making it into one. It's like because they want to, you know. But just the other day, though, he said that, you know, basically saying that Obama never called any of these people. Oh, well, that. So okay, that's that. what I, it, I think is becoming a bigger issue. Yeah. That well, he's I mean, doing all the other things around doing it. it wrong. The, actual, yeah. the actual event, I think, is really over, way over worried about. It's like, don't, don't worry about that. I mean, people, you know. He didn't know where he was because that's what those guys they know. They look, like, look, you know, they, you know, they're run right in the middle of uh, a whole bunch of people that are shooting at them. It's like, hello, you know, this is, but that's what they sign up for and they, they're there. That's, you know, soldiers are amazing people. I mean, you know, so, nah, whatever. It's just, it's, it's, it's being stretched out yeah. because it can, <laughs> because people by, want By to. the way, let me just say before I go to Patrick that I just yeah. noticed for the last hour, it's been just a picture of girlfriend and myself uh, down in the corner, uh, that my camera froze up again. I should constantly check for that, and I didn't. You tonight. look good for me. I, so I, I, I know how to, to fix me. it, but I oh, turn my are, picture yeah. off, and then I reboot the camera, and everything's fine. Oh. But I have no reason, no idea why it freezes, and it always has, freezed, has froze on Friday nights when girlfriend and I are talking. So I, See, I don't. Facebook just knows that a picture of you and her is yeah, better yeah. than a picture of you. So if I've been frozen us, yeah. for the last yeah. hour, folks, I, I apologize. Parts. Now to Patrick. What were you going to say, Patrick? What? Somebody knows. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, yes, Patrick. Okay. In reference to the Obama situation of not calling. Um, you know, you know family. I think General Kelly explained that as well, that not every president calls 
every time because if there's a large number of casualties, it's just something, and he even said President Bush um, may not have done that either. And I think in that case with Trump, as, you know, it got shit in his ears half the time anyway, he asked um, Kelly, what happened with you? Did Obama call? And he responded to, I believe, to Trump saying, no, Obama did not call me. So then that, where he took off on that. I mean, you know, Trump sometimes, or most times, need to fucking get the shit out of his ears yeah. and close his mouth and listen to the people around you. Yeah. So I think it's an issue again. Um, and I think that Congresswoman, you know, and she went on television this morning, she was interviewed, and now she says she's a rock star. You know what she is? She's a fucking pain in the ass. Go back to whatever state you came from. Florida. Well, but, but, hey, but the mom said I, that what she said was true. Well, yeah. Listen, I, it, it it, the, on, on the other the hand, problem, on the, the other the hand, problem, wait a minute, on the other hand, heard, half the conversation, wait a minute, mm -hmm. on the other hand, don't you think that maybe... Trump was asking for it when he went after Obama on this whole thing because he went after Obama before this woman came out with what he did with the call. So it really, you know, Trump causes his own problems. If he had not yeah. done that, then uh, this uh, this congresswoman wouldn't have said, hey, you know, whatever. So this uh, Betty Furness thing. Yeah, uh, it, it looks to me as if she's having trouble keep, uh, opening the door and, and keeping it closed, but it didn't fall off. Well, no, it fell off. OK, then it's another yeah. one. Yeah. I'll find it. Yeah. Hey, Alex. <laughs> yes. Yes, Tim. The, the problem was the fact that Trump couldn't just let it go and he had to go after the congressman. Brings General Kelly out who had, gave a very good speech, but then he went after the congressman and lied about a speech she made a couple years ago when they opened an FBI regional office in Florida saying that she was bragging about... She bragged about nothing. She actually praised FBI agent after FBI agent. She wasn't even in Congress when they got funding for that. So General Kelly got caught in a lie because one of the Florida papers posted a whole video of her speech. So they, Trump could just say, I meant well, if it was taken wrong, I apologize. He couldn't let that go. He had to compare himself to Obama and go after a congresswoman. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. He can't get past his narcissism. Yeah. And uh, now General Kelly's tainted because now we've got General Kelly in a lie. Because okay. he either was prepped wrong, because he actually attended that speech, and he had it all wrong because nothing in that speech said what Kelly said she said. Okay, Kevin had his hand up first, and then Patrick. Kevin? I mentioned it the other night, but the guy doesn't know how to talk when he's in a bad situation. And you can tell from many times before, of like, the, like for instance, Puerto Rico, when he was talking to that family, what did he say before he left to that family? That He said, have a good time. You know, he, he, he gets bound up in bad situations like that, and it's shown quite a few times before. And I think he may have said that, but mm -hmm. it came out obviously the wrong way. The right. best thing he could do is just shut up and not say it and not be a caller because you don't have to call. And, 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 you know, when you say the presidents didn't call, then, then Patrick's next. When you say the presidents don't have to call, a perfect example of them not having to call is, can you imagine a president having to call everyone whose son died in Vietnam? Yeah. You yeah. know, that would be impossible. It would just right. be impossible. Um, yes, Patrick. Well, that was what Kelly had mentioned is if the casualty rate is high, he, his understanding is all presidents. Right. Mark is, is, is Mark gone? Yeah. Yeah. Is he, is, <laughs> is, wait a minute, is that Mark snoring? Yes, yeah. you should yeah. hang up on him. Mark? Wait. Mark? Just hang up on you. I, yeah, yourself. it would be the nice thing to do. Can we take donations to buy him a CPAP? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, uh, no it would be nice. I think it would be the nice thing to do to hang up on him. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it looks yeah. a little. Uh, listen, I, 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 don't, I don't blame him. I'd fall asleep, too, if somebody were talking to me about Betty Furness and Bess Meyerson. So, you know. Uh, 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 hey. 
There we go. Wait a he minute. He wakes up, he can call back in. Yeah, yeah he, he can call back in if he finally minutes, suddenly yeah. realizes that I can't get rid of him. Remove from this group. There we go. Okay. Yankees just lost again. Yeah. Did, you hear, did you hear the story about George W. Bush? Oh, wait a minute. I want Patrick's got his hand up. Oh, go ahead. I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish. Um, and with respect to General Kelly lying, he didn't lie. Mm -mm. What he did is he referenced a hollow barrel. He never said anyone's name. He never even indicated it was the same congresswoman. He just said hollow barrel and a congressperson. He never mentioned her. She assumed it was her because she was there at the same time. That was an assumption on her part. He never indicated her. He just said a hollow barrel because a hollow barrel makes the most noise. And the congresswoman who was there got up and all she said was she got the funding for the $20 million for the building and then sat down. Well, he did also, not name, yeah. he did not name her. Also, so didn't, didn't, it up when wait, you're talking about that hold, hold on a second. Didn't Kelly also say that the, he was sitting there in the room advising Trump on what to say and that yeah, he yeah. told he was the one that told him to say the you know the guy knew what he was getting into he was advising because him. He didn't because tell him what that's to say. what somebody had said to him when his son died that you know you should yeah. feel that your son uh, did an admirable thing he knew what he was getting into and he went into it anyway that was basically and that's my point is that he couldn't translate that into a conversation out of his own mouth yeah exactly yeah Patrick and the other thing that uh, just that Tim was getting to is um, I was listening to the radio this morning and it, it would believe that um, he was referencing Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was also at that um, thing, at the FBI thing. Not the black congresswoman, but Debbie Wasserman Schultz. But again, what, what did that have to do with this incident, though? Nothing. I, well, I he would update for the refrigerator. Helen soldiers. <laughs> And fallen FBI agent, his, his whole uh, thing was how you respect the fallen. And this particular congresswoman got up and talked about something that had zero to do with the sacrifice of life by the two FBI agents. That yeah, was the, Congress, the, the congresswoman that they were talking about actually had people repeat the pledge of the FBI and went to great extent to talk about all the law enforcement officers. She even had everybody in the office, in the, in the audience, stand up and get saluted for being law enforcement officers. She gave great due respect to all the officers in her speech. And okay, this is, I, you know something, this is, this, that, this, that is get, this is getting to be a pissing match. You know, I, 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 I think, I think, I think that for well, hold on a second. For once, you know, I'm going to say, let's give Trump the benefit of the doubt that, you know, we're always getting on him for everything because he deserves it. OK, but in this case, you know, it's 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 a, it's a, a question of he says she said. Uh, and I just don't know that it, it, it that any of it makes much sense but between That's you and true. me, you know, and that. Uh, whatever he said, at least he made a call and he was trying to say something, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like the guy I knew who couldn't say anything right. And he had, it went on a date with a girl and the girl got very upset because he said to, he says, you know something, you're looking great since your face cleared up, you know, I mean, uh, making an insult. No, I, uh, no, you know, I give him credit for making the calls. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. But there was, there's one story about George W. Bush that, and these families are really upset because they've lost a loved one. And we don't know really what happened. But George <laughs> W. Bush was confronted with the lady that tore into him at one of the, uh, one of the, when he met in person with her. And he just stood there and took it and let it go. Was That's that the, the mark of a leader. That yeah. bought a, uh, a bit of land in, near uh, Bush's ranch and was holding up signs. And uh, I think she eventually ran for some office. Uh, yes, yes, yes. She made a big deal out of it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, Phil, uh, Phil has an update on uh, Betty Furness. 
Well, actually, the update is that what happened is that the spot, the refrigerator spot, we, I guess we're not remembering it or you're not remembering it accurately. The spot, the whole deal was that the door refused to open. But the interesting thing is it wasn't Betty Furness. Uh, there was an actress, June Graham, who was substituting for her <laughs> and that and the door did not open. Oh, OK. And, and so it didn't fall off. But, uh, you know, isn't folklore something there? You know, well, hey, oh, you know, th this folklore we're talking about is how many years ago? 60 years ago? 1956 or so. Yeah. Yeah. But I was I was yeah, 16 at, at the time. Yeah. I mean, it would have to be about 60 years ago. So uh, let the you know, it's like they said in in the uh, uh, Liber the movie Liberty Valance, a man who shot Liberty Valance, you know, uh -huh. uh, when there's a, uh, a legend and when there's the truth, print the legend. Right. Well, yeah, that yeah, the that. legend was it fell off. The truth was it wouldn't open. It wouldn't <laughs> open. OK, no. Whatever. Uh, Either way, it's not a way to sell a fridge. Basically. No, it's no way to sell a refrigerator. Uh, no, I think that you know. What, uh, I'll tell you what we're, we're there. There's some what we in this new mediaized age, we tend to go overboard. Uh, in the case of Trump, and I'm not in any way trying to say something nice about Trump, because quite frankly, I, I, are you still there, Kevin? By the way. Yeah, I'm here. My I was getting a lot of. Yeah. breaking up and stuff so okay you were looking fine you were looking fine but that's okay um because when you're out there in the wilderness as your background uh you do look like santa claus but anyway <laughs> uh that's next month uh the um what was i going to say uh, uh it, it, you know we're living in a mediaized age where they take things and beat them to death i mean the, the Weinstein story broke when? Maybe a week and a half ago? And it's still the top story every night? I mean, don't they have anything else happening in the world? And that well, happens all, the problem, also anytime Trump says anything now, it gets shoved back down his throat. Now, sometimes, yeah, it probably should. And other times, eh, not so much. All right. And in this case, this thing is just a pissing match. But he started it and he started it by going out after Obama and said he never called anybody. You know, and then they've got video of him, you know, down at Edwards Air Force Base when 44 guys were coming back and saluting the coffins as they went by. You know, so obviously Obama did his part. All right. But he started it with that. So then somebody was trying to catch him in a gaffe on his part of not responding to the troops. And so this congresswoman comes along and brings up this story. And then it becomes, it becomes the story every day for like a couple of days. He's going back and forth for first place on the news with uh, Weinstein, you know. Uh, and uh, th that's the trouble with news today. There's, there are important stories out there, things that, you know, are a matter of life and death for you that we're never going to hear about because yeah, they're too this, busy with this, with this, with this, with a lot of this uh, minutia. No, it's not fake news. It's just the wrong news. Yeah. Well, well, he, he brought it on himself by, by poking the bear all the That's time. That's correct. Absolutely. He start stuff and then... Uh, obviously, if you start picking fights with the press, they're going to fight back. I mean, he and they goes got the after McCain. He goes after McCain the other day with a tweet, and he finishes it off by saying, "When I decide to retaliate, it's not going to be pretty." What? What kind of threat is that? Yeah. You know, yeah. this this is not schoolyard. This is Boy. not this is not presidential, and this is not the alternative your people wanted. Okay. Well, they just Bush and Obama somebody... mentioned that the other day too. Uh, yeah. You know this. This is uh, what Mitt Romney uh, predicted. Um, you know, I sent you something that showed uh, all the legislation that's going on in the House uh, right now while they're talking about uh, uh, all these different uh, deals. You know, the 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 phone calls and the this and the that. And uh, uh, but meanwhile, uh, there's a number of things uh, and it was posted by someone, a very liberal person to show, hey, you know, these, uh, you know, I'll find it. Did you you didn't open it, did you? No. Uh, Al 
No. 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 Uh, let me. Let me so there's a lot of stuff going on now that we're not hearing about at all. You know that they're, they're, they're trying to pass and various. Uh, no, but I mean, just things. This, things in you know, this. Oh, by the way, you know, the things in this. We may lose yeah. this. We may not do that. You know, and, well, and nobody's. They're not. You know, it's well, not. Uh, here's it's a, not he, interesting enough he, news he, for the average. He, he, uh, yes, Jason. Yes, Jason. I was say the, the biggest thing I'm hearing about right now is the two Santa Claus tax reform, and you know how many times are we going to go through this? Let's give let's give all these rich people tax cuts because they're going to create more jobs, but then it doesn't happen, and then it never oh, has. It give never. Them more tax it cuts. never and has. It's, a, it's the battered wife syndrome. It, it's and never that's what happens every time. If you can make more money, Phil, but you're not having more customers, you're not going to hire more employees, are you? No. Uh, but no. uh, no, and, and you know something, this whole idea done. of trickle down economics was tried once before, and the only thing once, that trickles no, down is the piss from before. your dick this, because you didn't this, flick it enough. This this was a post put up by a very liberal woman, Pat Montadon. Uh, she used to be a uh, 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 socialite in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. She says HR 861 is to terminate uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. H.R. 610, vouchers for public education, which may end the uh, free public education. H.R. 899, terminate the Department of Education. H.R. 69, repeal the rule protecting wildlife. H.R. 370, repeal the Affordable Care Act. H.R. 354, defund parent plan okay. and parenthood. <laughs> Uh, HR always do. <laughs> there's only a couple more. Uh, uh, HR 785, national right to work. Uh, HR 83, mobilizing against sanctuary cities. HR 147, criminalize abortion. HR 808, impose sanctions against. Okay, so Iran. What, what's the point she's trying to make here? Uh, she's saying that. Uh, yeah, Rachel, all the shit's uh, evil. Uh, called it out. She says, uh, pay attention to what's actually happening in the House. Uh, the rest is diversion at this point. Uh, we're all being sidetracked by Trump, Pence, the NFL, Puerto Rico, Harvey Weinstein, yeah. sexual, uh, predator, uh, sexual predators in Hollywood, Russian hacking, and the MLB. Uh, so, but this is what's going on. And uh, so that, that's all you, I'm you saying. Know, is, you know what I started to think about today? was um, uh, because everybody's talking about how, you know, all these women are saying, well, I've had that happen to me, and I've had this happen to me, and so on. And, yeah, there were probably aggressive guys in your dating pattern that tried to get laid, but you wouldn't let them, and then that was an unwelcomed advance. And uh, then, you, then you do a tweet that says, me too. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the point, in fact, was I tried to look over my own life, which was quite a sexual live show we say i had a lot of things going on to see if i ever did anything that could be considered uh untoward okay that today if i did it i would be in trouble for or somebody would complain about it and i had to very honestly say to myself no i never have you well know. in the couple of years that we hung out i remember that most of the women that you encountered came to you you mm -hmm. didn't necessarily approach them. Right. Uh, they they made advance towards you. Yeah. Uh, but they go to people. They go toward people of power. But no. But I never. I never. Um, I never forced myself on a woman. Never. Ever. You never. You, you never used your position of power. I never used that's, my position that's, of power that's either. Because you got integrity. Well, I. I. You know, my power was not the. Not <laughs> that's the, going a little far. My my power was not the kind of power that could have gotten these women a job or anything else. Maybe they were. You know, maybe they were fame fuckers. You know that, and you know that, the power uh, of of uh, familiarity. For instance, when you uh, come over the radio every morning, and they, s they listen to you every morning, uh, five mornings a week, they become familiar, and they you become uh, like a friend, and you've already broken down the barrier, yeah. uh, even though you've never met them. Yeah. You know, so when they do reach well, out, all, all I'm saying is I tried to think, could I have done anything that would be misinterpreted as this? And the only thing that I've done that I did that could have been misinterpreted. And, and let me explain this is that I went to I had had sexual relations with a lot of different women, some of which were one night stands, other which you know, became friends or stayed friends or we kept seeing each other or they became uh, booty calls or whatever. But 
uh, one of them could just have, you know, made a claim that wasn't true simply right. because we had slept together. And what went on between the two of us is only knowledgeable between the two of us. So today I would be much more careful about who I bedded down with. I wouldn't have been as easily promiscuous, let's say, as I once was because of the possible consequences that one of these women would lie. I, I told the story once that I got a call from a man who called me up and said, you Alex Ben? And I said, yes, because I was in the phone book. Anybody could call me. Made myself very accessible so I could get laid. Uh, I made myself very accessible. Alex Bennett or Ben Schwarzman? Uh, as Alex, I think it's Alex Bennett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, oh, I, yeah. I I stayed in the book. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the book, you don't hear me, and many people say that anymore. Uh, really? Uh, but I and he called me and he said, "Well, my daughter is pregnant. And she says you're the father." And I said, what's your daughter's name? And he told me his daughter's name. And I had to start thinking, you know, because, you know, I had quite a few women and, you know, could, could be one of those women. And the name was not familiar to me at all. And I said, I, I, I you know, I, I've never met her. I said, I don't know the name. And I would remember her, I think, if I had had some kind of relationship with her. And I said, how old is she? And he said, oh, she's 17. I said, I don't go out with women that young. I said, I think your daughter is lying, and I think if I were you, I would question her again. And later on that day, I got a call from him apologizing and saying that she had lied. She, she admitted she had lied, that, you know, I was the first name that came to her mind because she used to listen to me every morning. Did you tell uh, well, that you know, story? Huh? Did you tell that story on the radio back at the Live 105 days? Uh, yes. I, 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 I think, think I, I remember that I think that I did, thing. yeah. Uh, yeah, you'd be okay now, Alex, because you could get a sixty-nine dollar online background check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, you go yeah, out with somebody. Yeah, yeah. just like I have. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I mean, the point is, what I'm saying is, is that that given that that happened back then, and that was a minor incident by comparison, if it yeah. had happened today, somebody just might push it because they say, "Oh, we could sue him, and we can get him in trouble, and we DNA can get the testing. papers, and uh, Gloria Allred will uh, will." Uh, uh, be my lawyer, and uh, or or her, or her do daughter, uh, what's her name, Lisa uh, Bloom, will be yeah. uh, be uh, mother and daughter doing the same thing. It will be my lawyer, and uh, all of a sudden, it's Alex Bennett is the sexual predator. Uh, you know what the big you question some... is, hey Alex? Yeah. You, you know what the big question is? What's your price to settle out of court if you did nothing wrong? True. Well, if I, if, 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 or, if I just not settle, well, I never had that kind of fuck you money, but if I had fuck you money, like, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein, I would settle, you know? Yeah. You know, but just think the kind of publicity it could get you now in cabinet. Yeah. Right. But you know, <laughs> True, yeah. But listen, I probably get fired from Gabnet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, we'll see at the board meeting. Yeah, see me at the board meeting. But I mean, you, it, you were talking about me. All, I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I had to think about, you know, did I, did I ever do anything that could be considered untoward? And I, and my answer to myself was very honestly, no. I never pushed myself on any woman. <laughs> I'd come on to a woman, but if she rebuffed my advances, I would back right off. You know, as any gentleman would. Unless his name was Weinstein, in which case we know a Weinstein, don't we? Or Cosby. <laughs> but unless your name is Weinstein, and then you just push and you push and you push and you walk into women's rooms at, you know, at night when they're trying to sleep and you pull your dick out and you start jerking it off. That's not right. You know, that's wrong. It's wrong. When's the um, movie of the week coming out? <laughs> but can they prove that he actually did that? No, it's very hard to prove any of this stuff. On right. the other hand, then you have to ask the question, well, then should have Weinstein been removed from the Weinstein Company? And should He's he been thrown, been thrown out of the academy? Because he, he has not been convicted of anything. Right, and they're you and know. they're treating him like a criminal. Yeah, but well, on has, the other hand, anybody came out on the other hand, he has, he has, he has, yes, in England. 
Uh, they're, they're, in England, there's somebody that filed criminal charges. L- LAPD is investigating as yeah. well. But let me let so me just what's say, the difference between but, him and Cosby? Well, wait a minute. Uh, 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 Cosby's black, uh, and and he used drugs. Not power. He used drugs more than power. Yeah, yeah, well, I think the power that. played into it, and there was probably some trust because of his position. Uh, you know uh, that there was some familiarity. You know, here he was. You know, the America's dad. Uh, you know, family man, uh, person above reproach. Yeah, the, the on, difference. On the the difference in the level of rape here. I mean, the level of accosting women. I think is, there's a great difference between Cosby and, and Weinstein. And as a matter of fact, now that Weinstein has come along, it probably takes the heat off of Cosby because he doesn't look quite so bad. You know, at least he gave the women drugs. You know, he, he anesthetized them before he did anything. You know what the biggest issue is, though, really? Yeah. A lot of those employees had to sign non-disclosure agreements. They want to get out of those now. You can't. You can't sign away your right uh, to uh, against a criminal act. So no, no, I'm talking about the employees that were witnesses, but no, are not victims. Uh, uh, no, if there was a criminal act, I, I don't think that, that those things come into play. Well, when, they don't know if it's a criminal act. They just know what the that the behavior was. You know, it's kind of it's kind of interesting though. And and uh, uh, Dave Chappelle did a whole bit on Cosby. And he talked about how, yes, Cosby did this, and he was supposed to do that and all that. He said, but you know what else he's done? And he listed all these causes that Cosby gave to and all these charities he helped and how he helped black and black comedians uh, move ahead and how he broke the race barrier on television, went through this whole litany of all the good things that Bill Cosby did. And then he said... So you do you weigh that against the bad he did, and do we eradicate all the good and don't credit him for all the good because of the bad that he did? And he said, I think the answer to that is no. You know, you have to remember that Bill Cosby did a lot of good, and if you look at Weinstein's life, forget about this stuff, the charities he gave to, the political committees he gave money to, you know, all, all those things. Uh, he was very much a a citizen, and a good citizen. You know, he was a gay, he, he, he had ch- held good, charities for the Simon Wiesenthal, the Simon Wiesenthal group. You know, yes, uh, uh, Patrick. I think um, in in both of those cases, that may be true. That one thing outweighed the other. The problem is, what will be remembered historically? <clears throat> especially by the millennials that have watched this and that are so hypersensitive to everything nowadays. Um, You know, this isn't people my age anymore. They're all in their 20s watching and seeing this. So in another 20 or 30 years, they, they they never saw Cosby on television. You know, they never saw Weinstein um, movies uh, the same way that I have or, or you have. So I think, you know, that outweighing stuff isn't going to matter a damn because all that's going to be remembered is the bad stuff by Cosby and by Harvey. Well, so, all, yeah, all that's going to be remembered is, you know, Weinstein's going to be thought of as the rapist. Let's say he goes to court on every one of these things and is found not guilty. It's kind of like O.J. Simpson. He was found not guilty. Well... <laughs> What do you? Uh, you still everybody's doing jokes about OJ killing his wife. You know. You know. Well, his, he lost his civil uh, I'll give you another one. Years ago, uh, years ago, there was a, a, a guy by the name of um, of uh, uh, Fatty Arbuckle, and he held a party oh, yeah. at the St. Francis Hotel, then. and a woman died, and he, he, he went to there. trial in three cases. He wasn't even there, but he went on three trials, ruined his career. But he wasn't even at the party where this woman, Virginia Rappé, died. Yeah. Was uh, it the Fairmont? Was it the St. Francis Hotel? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, you know, uh, if, if, Fatty Ar- if, if Fatty Arbuckle to this day is, uh, he's, the, what happened was, is a, a reporter said to a doctor, how could, she died of an internal hemorrhaging. And they figured it was from fucking or something. He said, well, how could that happen? And the doctor said, well, it could be like the insertion of a Coca-Cola bottle. 
Yeah. And ever since then, there's been a joke about a Coca-Cola bottle because of the Fatty Arbuckle situation. <laughs> so to say, that, like to say that, 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 that Weinstein is going to outlive this, listen, Woody Allen hasn't outlived his situation, you know, and Roman True. Polanski hasn't outlived his. Hey, Anthony Weiner's on his way into jail now, you know. Yeah. I thought he was a perfectly decent congressperson, and he could have run for mayor. Not anymore. Yeah, well, you know. The, the guy, the guy had. And he a few, didn't even. He did it all online. He had a few problems. Anyway, hey, listen, we gotta I, go. It's time to say adios uh, for tonight. Thank you to Mike and thank you to Jason. Glad the Frau let you out here, Jason. Uh, thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Phil. Thanks to Patrick. Thanks to Tim. Thanks to John Rockwell. Was there anybody else here tonight that? Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, our sleep. Mark, Mark fell asleep. Oh, Mark fell asleep. Mark, wake up. Uh, when you wake up, uh, I'm sorry if we hung up on you, but it was better than having you snore, and it was better than kind of embarrassing you by keeping you there sleeping. Uh, <laughs> if it happened to Phil, though, we'd leave him on. Uh, anyway, uh -huh. everybody, wave goodbye, okay? Wave goodbye to the folks out there. That's it for tonight. That's the Citizens Panel. That's what we call them. Uh, and we love them all, and we, we love them for calling. We would love you, too, if you call. Why don't you try joining the Citizen Panel some night? It doesn't have to be the same people all the time. We have room for lots of people. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. The, uh, the intersection is next with Jack and Amy, and that will be followed at 1 o'clock this morning by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett, and I'll see you on Tuesday. And as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.